your faith. And how we use that faith is up to us. I know without my faith in God, I'd already be gone. I know that. And uh, I'll be honest, sometimes I wonder why he lets me stay. But I'll be here till he's ready for me. And you will too. But I'm telling you where things are going now, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if we're all not about to go up together. The world is in a, in a horrible, horrible, horrible situation. Uh, a lot of it is the problem is with the church. Is that we have not intentionally or uh, consciously compromised, but we have in so many ways. Pat did an excellent lesson on Wednesday night and got on that a little bit. Uh, I saw something about this horrible terrorist. Uh, I don't even know her name. That would describe him other than a devil. Uh, and he used the word of God. And I wanted to puke. I didn't have a, a wastebasket hand here. I would have. When I heard a man that has killed so many children and so many people over something stupid, just over greed of property or whatever, land. Uh, when I heard Putin do that the other day, I thought, you know, you know, it's free, free, he can do what he will. They're not free over there. But anyway, uh, when he started quoting the scriptures, I thought, my goodness, what, what a horrible way to broadcast your pro propaganda and uh, using the word of God. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I'll tell you this right now, and you can tell them where you heard it. They're not going to use my God. Amen. The intent may be made, but it's not going to work. That's right. Amen. My God is going to stand and God's people are going to stand. Yeah. Right now, we have something so valuable in this. And in this house, we have people of all different walks of life. We have many professionals in this house. Many that have their doctorates in this house. But, uh, you know, it really doesn't matter about how smart you are. It's how you use. It's how you use what you have. Uh, I'll never forget, uh, on how, well, many of you will remember Stephen Kim Bollinger. And uh, when Bo got old enough to start going out, uh, I remember Steve would always tell him, remember your name. Always remember your name. Because you're not out there just uh, portraying you. You're out there about this whole family. You're portraying this whole family. So when you're when you're there, think about that. And I thought about this morning. There's a name that you and I can declare right now for every situation. And I want you right now to join with me as we get into this word today. Not just for Jan. There's others. I've seen you. I asked her. Uh, she's had a, a horrible time recovering from this COVID. There's a few others others of us that have had a, a little bit of it hanging on. And uh, I know that faith in God has brought us to this point. We have several. My precious Harold back there, he, he we got to visit with him yesterday at the breakfast a little bit. And uh, he was probably, him and Gene Johnson were the nearest to. Well, you were pretty close to the death, weren't you, Cindy, at one time? And uh, <clears throat> with the, the situation. And God brought them through for their faith in God. Amen. Brought them through. Yes. And I know that God does not halfway do anything. The good work that he's begun in you, he'll do what? What they do with it? He's going to perform it. He's going to perform that good work that he started in you. So this morning, your faith in God will stand. Romans 10, 17 says this. So then faith cometh by David laying his hands on you. By Pastor B laying his hands on you. Faith only comes one way and one way only. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Right. A lot of noise going on today, church. There's a whole lot of noise. But we need to hear what the Word of God says. You know what? I read the back of the book, and I know we win. Amen. I know for a fact that we're the winners. That's right. We're not sitting around here a hopeless people. We are victorious. Hallelujah. And I believe it's time... That we all step up and act like it. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing. And I like to say it like this. And hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. 
Even though this may be a lesson we've had in the past, it's one that I believe we need to be reminded of daily. Especially right now. I don't know. I know David was sensing some things in the spirit realm. Uh, I've had a personal thing going on in my family for several months now, since October of last year. Uh, actually, November, the 1st of November. Uh, when we got back from our cruise in November, all the way from Galveston, I had a, a text. And uh, it was uh, kind of alarming when I got it, and it's increased ever since then. But thank God, truth will prevail. That's right. And thank God I got a report this morning that finally, finally, the person involved is beginning to see some things right. differently. Right. You know, I couldn't change that. I did. I've had some input with it, pretty bold input, to tell you the truth. But I can't change another person's heart. Right. You can't change another person's will. But you can stand in faith believing. I don't care what your loved ones are going through right now. God is able. Uh, Y'all know my daughter Robin. And uh, God's just blessing that girl over and over. And uh, she shared a, a little situation with me this week. Yesterday actually. Concerning her three boys. And regardless of what's going on in the natural right now, she's still standing in faith and speaking Amen. the word of God over them. Yes. In situations that are completely in the natural realm hopeless, but she chooses to trust God over her children. Yes. That's exactly what we need to do. Amen. We need to trust God with our children. It doesn't. Did I get that right, Janelle? Your kids are ten years and five months apart. Isn't that right? How much? Nine. Nine months apart. Nine and five. Months. Nine and five. Okay. I caught the five month part. I thought that was cool. You know, plan like my mom and dad didn't plan like that. Every two years, there comes another. Nine times. Well, eight times actually. Eight of us lived anyway. And I was the last one, and they said, uh uh, that's enough. No more. But uh, anyway, I, I just thought that was cool. Our faith in God causes us to stand. And I want you to be encouraged today, sister. I know you're brand new on the block, but uh, you blessed me Wednesday night with some things you were saying. God has placed people in my life right now that. Uh, I don't really understand all of it, but I know it's becoming a blessing. These friends that came last week, all of the my karaoke little family, there's another one that, uh, and I'm, I'm going to get him to come, give his testimony. His name's Paul Rodriguez. Precious, precious man. Wife, uh, she goes by Chevy, but she tried to say her name the other night. I can't. I'll get it. One of these days, I'll get her Spanish name. I just went so excited over their grandma's name. Ever since that funeral that day I read that, I thought, that is so cool. I've known her all, I've known Darlene's mom and, and uh, Delinda's mom for, I mean, grandmother for over 30 years. And I didn't know, I lied to her, her name was Susie. But when I read the other day about her, her name is Jesus. Isn't that a pretty name? You know, in, in the male version, it's Jesus and uh, Jesus in, in Spanish. But a, in the woman, it's Jesus. I thought that's so pretty. If I ever get married and have another kid, I'm going to name her as Jesus. <laughs> Anybody wants to have a kid with me? Well, I mean, you've got to get married first. Uh, I'm 73, and you better be able. Ask that one back younger. <laughs> in the late, well, how old were you? 48 years the last one. Oh, wow. Well. God help me. Matthew 8, verse 5. Thank you, God. It doesn't matter what you're going through today. What's important to you is important to God. And I know in this house, we are very close. Uh, I'm going to say something I don't want to, I'm not going to embarrass you, I don't believe. We have a new young man in this house that we're all going to have to help support. And I know everybody sure will do. That's one thing about this church you're going to find out, sister. Everybody helps take care of other people's kids. 
like when we're raising Michael, it's a, it takes a village to raise that great grandson. Daddy's doing a great job. He's the best. That boy right there is the best daddy I've ever seen in my life. I'll, I'll say that without any hesitation. But there's still times you just need help with it. With it. And you're in a good place, sister, for that. The most loving people in the world. But as we reach out, back to my buddy Paul, uh, the other night he shared with me that when he was 17 years old, he was down uh, across some, the causeway going into Corpus. And uh, I never actually paid much attention to it. I've been across that bridge many times. But I hadn't ever noticed that it's got a hump. Anybody else here ever notice that? It's got kind of a little hill in the middle of it. You notice that? I never noticed that. He was 17 years old, or 16, right at 17. And uh, somewhere or another, they were hit from behind. There's a big wreck there. And he was standing out of his car, uh, the car he was in, directing traffic and trying to help him. There had been an accident. Well, somebody come, and uh, for several days, he don't remember anything. But he said one thing he does remember, he said he, he don't remember getting hit. But when he when he woke up a little bit, he was down in the water, and he said he's not a swimmer. But he said he felt something lift him up. And now uh, this is a, a very strict Catholic brother. That don't make a bit of difference. He loves God. So I'll just tell you that right now. And he lifted, uh, said something lifted up. I said, well, you know what that something was, don't you? He said, oh, yes. Anyway, uh, he was uh, comatose for some time after that. And somewhere or another, he was able, he couldn't swim, but he, uh, what I call dog paddled up and got on, on land. But he ended up losing his leg at a young age. And uh, he shared that testimony. There's a lot more to it. I don't want to tell it all because I'm going to get him to come and share it with you. But uh, God has just brought the man so far. He's 68 years old now. A singer like you wouldn't believe. But God had something in store for him. Blessed him with a beautiful family, a beautiful wife. All of these many years, what we would call a handicap. A real, y'all that remember my brother-in-law, Ron. Ron Ledbetter. Lost his leg when he was eight years old. We have pictures of him doing pole vaulting. He could swim like a fish. He, we, we called him hop along. He, he'd take that leg off and just hop everywhere. My kids used to always love uh, Uncle Ron. Messing with him about his not having a leg. But you can, you can still persevere in life. There's people in this room right now, maybe you don't have anything that extreme. But there's things that you deal with. But with our faith in God, we can make it. Yes, amen. We were singing that song earlier about those lungs. I took that personal. Yeah. I took that personal. Amen. I thank God. Yes. I thank God that He keeps breath in my lungs. I thank God that my son was totally healed when they told him he'd be on oxygen the rest of his life. Last October a year ago. They told him that God had a different plan. God had a different plan. God has a different plan for you today. Again, I don't know what everyone is going through in this room, but I know my God is able. Matthew 8, verse 5 says this. When Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came to him a centurion beseeching him. I love this story. <clears throat> the centurion, he was a boss man, kept looking for Jesus. And saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy. He's paralyzed, grievously tormented. Jesus said to him, I'll come and heal, I'll come and heal him. Huh. Isn't that a great conversation to have with the Lord? Yeah. I want to tell you right now, he will in your case today. He will, just like he promised this man. He said, I will come and heal him. But the centurion answered, said to him, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come to under my roof, but speak the word only. I know Jim and Jan are listening today. If, we're going, if we are being broadcast today, I hope we are. I know that you're listening today. And I know that we can speak the word and we are speaking to the word. Yes. But not only to her, but to everyone in this room right now, 
that any area of your physical being, David already prayed that prayer earlier before this prophetic utterance came about. About every area of our life, if you notice, the Holy Spirit touched every area. Any area that you're going through right now, my God is able, and just like with the promise to this jury person said, I'll come and heal you, or heal the man, and then he told him, he said, just speak the word only. I say right now, Lord, just speak the word only. Amen. Over Doraline for healing. Yes. Amen. Total healing. You know, there's things going on sometimes in your physical body. You don't know what it is. But God does. You know why? Because he made you. That's right. He created you. Just speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. He went on to say, for I'm a man under authority. I have bosses. I have soldiers under me. And I say to this one man, go, and he goeth, but to another come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. I'd like to have me one of those. Yeah. I'd like to have one of those. But, uh, you know, then I'd really be lazy. Come and you tell them where to do. Go there and come here and do this. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled. Said to them that followed him, all the others around there, he was saying to them, Verily I say to you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. I want this house to be a house of faith. We are a house of prayer. But I want it to be known as a house of faith. Many miracles God has wrought. You that follow the chair pain or uh, uh, the prayer chain or a part of it, you see the miracles. I'm getting a tongue here. Hell on. Mouth of me. No, I'm leaving a mouth on me right uh, You see the miracles that God is doing when these believers come together and pray and trust God. Speaking to Him in faith. We have some prayer warriors in this house that are so filled with faith that if you'll watch you that are on it, you'll watch. What they give is not their opinion. They give what the Word of God says about every situation. And you know what? By doing that, they're speaking the word. They're speaking the word only. And they're seeing manifestation of the healing power of God because of speaking that word. I thought of the miracles just this past year that we've seen. Uh, this young man, and, and I know I mention people often, but uh, I was hoping I could get a hold of him and ask him to be here today. His name is Vaughn. 22, maybe 23 by now, but... I mean, his mother one night, Ed Hooks, came up to me, and uh, she don't see her there. She's just one of my friends there, and her and her husband, Bo Tim, and, and, and uh, Christy. Anyway, she come to me that night, and I greeted her like I was done. She said, Pastor, would you, would you, uh, would you pray for my son? Did have the people to pray for him? I said, well, I'm going to do better than that. We're going to pray right now. So we prayed right then. But then all y'all know the story. When Bob went in, he was in a bad car wreck. When he went in for surgery, there was a man in the open in the up in the waiting room, and he had a prayer book there, and he ended up giving it to her. But our our uh, elders had laid hands on a cloth and anointed it with oil, and we sent it to him. His mother and father, the night before the surgery, had joined with him, and he held that prayer cloth. This young man, they didn't know anything about. It. They were denominational folks, never heard of nothing. But I gave him the scriptures for it and everything and showed him what we're doing. Anyway, most of you already know this outcome. Some may not. But God healed that young man. Yeah. Here a few months ago, she sent out a, a thing and he was jumping and dancing around. And she said, I apologize that he's acting so silly. I said, let him act silly. Yeah. Let him act silly. He's glad to be alive. That's the power of God working. Well, they misplaced the clock. And so she mentioned it to me. She said, uh, uh, somewhere or another it got lost. Next time I saw her, she said, oh, he found it. She said he had it inside of his phone case the whole time. And he told me, that wasn't going to get nowhere away from me, Mom. I know. He knows. That young man knows what brought him through. Yeah. was the power of prayer. Faith in God. Are you with me this morning? Many, many, many other miracles that you have been a part of by trusting and believing and speaking it out of your mouth. Verse 13 in that same opening. And Jesus said unto the centurion. Go thy way. 
And as thou hast believed, so be it unto, done unto thee. His servant was healed in that selfsame hour. Jonathan stood in faith to see his vision come to pass. When they were practicing, they, they've had it open a while. And uh, they'd have to move their stuff in and out and do a lot of it out in the yard and, and uh, all of that. Now they're going to have their own gym. Abel. And it's, it's a vision that God is behind it, church. Amen. God is behind it. And God is good. All the time he's good and he's always doing those things. Yes. Let him work a miracle in your life. Let your faith just expand to the point today that whatever it is that you have need, even if you don't have a need, you may be believing for someone else. Go to the next chapter 9, verse 20 and 22. I'm not going to read a lot more this morning. I believe you're getting the word. This is what this is a story, matter of fact, that the boy I just told you about, Bond, when his mom was in that uh, in that waiting room, this man that was ministering to her, and they were ended up giving her the prayer book. This is the scripture she stood on. The scripture right here. Behold a woman, which was, of course, it was her son, different situation, but the same God. Behold a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him and touched. Of his garment. The hem of his garment. Church, that's what we need to be bold in. We need to be stepping out. And reaching out and touching him. We need to be, when we not just let our, our faith be spoken, but let it be active in our life. For she said within herself, this woman talking to herself. I don't know about any of y'all that live alone. Do you ever find out more and more you get where you talk to yourself? I work out problems doing that. I find stuff that's lost doing that. I don't have anybody else to blame. I just have to blame somebody. Paul brings me my supper almost every night. I feel like I'm a prisoner sometimes. He brings me my supper. And, uh, but uh, I find myself talking to myself. I was thinking about that this morning. This woman was talking to herself. She said some good stuff. She said, if I could just touch him. Church, if we could just touch him. For Robert and Judy, we're touching him today, Shirley. Yes. For Jen and Jim, yes. we're touching him today, church. Yes. Faith. 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 For you that may not be up to date on Sister Jen, she will be starting chemo here in a few weeks. She has her poured in already. And God is not through with that lady. That's right. She's a matriarch of this house. But everybody looks at her and respects her in that area. And God is not through with her. God is the healer this morning. Amen. And that lady has got some. How many of your kids has she prayed for? Oh, yeah. How many of your spouses has she prayed for? Probably everybody in this room has gone to her for help. And guess what? You've always got it. Now it's our turn. Now it's our turn to let this faith build in us so much that we're not accepting any other answer. Amen. We're not accepting anything else other than complete healing in her body. Yeah. If it has to come through the chemo, so be it. But God is doing it. He can even touch that chemo right. and make it just make it disappear on the first time. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, that's the God I serve. That's the God I yes, yeah, supernatural, and that's what I'm believing. I'm in agreement with that right now. Jesus yeah. name. Supernatural healing for our sister Jan. Uh, this woman said to herself, she said, if I just touch his garment, I shall be whole. What no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's what's going to happen. Some of you, I'm, again, I say it, I know a few things are going on in this house. Some of you, what you're going through. Stand in faith. They brought little Joshua up to me earlier. I sung him a song last week, but he wasn't here to hear about it last week. Hey, he's already grown so big, four months old. And I told Mama, I said, you can tell he's well cared for. Can you, have you ever noticed something? I, I'm not a, a licensed psychologist, but I, I deal with it sometimes. I have a family, you know. And, uh, but I've noticed something over the years, and children in particular. I just have a, a, a sense, it's by the Holy Spirit. When a child is not receiving the care they need, or some real bad stuff going on, God has allowed me to be able to see that and know how to minister to them and know how to love on them 
And that's what you and I are responsible for today. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Stand in faith and see the outcome and believe God. Just like this woman, she didn't have any doubt. She started talking to herself. She started telling herself, muttering over and over and over, if I can just touch him, I'll be whole. Today, you need to be saying that in your situation. You need some finances in your life. Start saying over and over. I know God knows my need today, and I know he is the provider. I'm a tither, and I know God is good about his word, and he's going to bless me because I'm a tither. Well, do you think that's the only reason? I know it sure is a good reason. I know it's worked for me for over all these years. Uh, I tell you personal stuff sometimes, but one time when I was very young, I started picking up pennies for the obvious reason I don't do it much anymore. Because <laughs> if I got something to do down there, I do everything I can while I'm down there, you know. But uh, so I don't, I don't bend down like that much. But I had a, a eagle eye. I could spot them in the dark on a parking lot. You think I, I, many Wilma would say, "How did you see that?" I said, "It's a penny." But I saved those pennies and I invested them in annuity. I said about this this morning too. I sent my son to a year and a half of Sam Houston, which ain't a cheap college, for a year and a half on that annuity of the annuities that I had bought out of pennies. Hello. All right. I wouldn't have been over to pick up a penny if my heart started. They bailed up. I know they didn't seem like much uh, work very much nowadays, but you put enough of them together. Amen. Go. A whole lot of them together. And that is a true story and a blessing. Well, I noticed, and I did that, I started finding other valuable things. By the way, I still haven't found my class ring. I want you all to still agree with me on that. You all watch, some of you all get on Facebook. I have a feeling it's going to show up on Facebook, and I don't do Facebook. So if anybody sees a, a, a 1966 Agar Oklahoma high school ring uh, on there, you call them. And if they want a reward, go ahead and pay it, and then you may or may not get reimbursed. <laughs> no, really, watch for it for me, please. It, it, it did, I never wore that thing for years. And one night I decided to wear it and lost it that night. And uh, anyway, I, it, it don't mean a lot to nobody. It really ain't all that to me either. I mean, I know I, know I graduated, but uh, it is real gold. It is real gold. And it's real pretty ring, too. They, they made a real nice thing. But anyway. Uh, Whatever you're believing for this morning, just believe God can do it. He can bring those things back that are hidden. He said, I may but touch the hem of his garment. I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Take courage. That's what that means. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. That very hour. Jesus knew after she touched him. He felt, in, other, in another opening, it tells you that the, he felt it, uh, the, the uh, what's the word? Uh, virtue. The virtue go to her from out of his, from him unto her. And she was healed. I'm telling you, God is able this morning. Go with me to Luke. The seven, I'm almost finished. Amen. I knew you was going to do it. <laughs> Seems like we just can't get out of that. Get one broke out and then, and, and then some other stuff. For you that don't know, Don, Don uh, Bradley always did that when, he, when I said I was going to close. He knew it. Not paying attention, I would when I got ready. <laughs> Luke 7, verse 47 says this, and this is Jesus' words again. I love that. I'm going to learn that song about written in red. That one we do, I believe. We, we play the thing. Oh, yeah. uh, I want to learn that. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many. Oh, this is a woman. This is the prostitute church. That nobody, I'll start saying nobody wanted to do with her. Well, they obviously did because she was very wealthy. And she had a box and an ointment. And she anointed Jesus to speak with that ointment, that oil. We all know the story. She dried it up to speak with her hair. Wherefore I say to thee, her sins, which are many. Some of them were disputing about him having anything to do with her. And uh, Jesus said, For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, 
Thy sins are forgiven. That's all it's about, church. If God's forgiven you, you're forgiven. I don't care what your mother-in-law says about you. Or anybody else. If you're forgiven, you're forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? He said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. You're saved. It doesn't matter what all these scoffers say about it. It doesn't matter what scoffers might say about you this morning. God has saved you. You're saved. That's right. That's something you know nobody can take away from you. That's right. They can take your money. They can repossess your car. They can even take your children away from you. I know that's a sad state, but that's happened to people. Sometimes it shouldn't have happened for sure. But anyway, that's one thing they can't take away from you is your salvation. In Acts 14, verse 7, it says this. And there they preached the gospel. They were at Lystra, Derby, and uh, Lyconia. And they preached the gospel. And there sat a man, there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak who steadfastly beholding him, he intently was observing Paul, and listen to what he was saying, and perceiving, oh no, Paul was looking at the man. Excuse me, I've got that wrong. Paul was steadfastly watching this guy. He knows that he had that affliction. And he said, and the same heard Paul speak, the steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. I know you've ministered a lot in healing and miracles. Many of y'all, darling, I know you have. You can just tell when somebody's receiving. Yeah. You know, uh, there's always going to be people that are going to make you responsible if they don't get what they're up there for, but they didn't come up there in faith to begin with for prayer. But those who come in faith receive. Anyway, that's what happened with this man. Paul noticed it. And Paul said with a loud voice, Stand up right on my feet. And he leaped and walked. I don't know how many of y'all, very few of you would remember this, if you do at all. Many years ago, out at Sugar Valley, there was this man named John Perry from Bay City. And they, he and Barbara started coming to the church, and uh, I think the full gospel business guys had told him about the church or something. And he came, and he was on, was he in a wheelchair or on a walker? Wheelchair, I think. One of the two. Anyway, he couldn't walk very much. Uh, no, he must have been a wheelchair because he couldn't walk enough to be on a walker. And uh, anyway, we had an evangelist, Brother Fred Ordell in. Oh, yeah. And Brother Fred went back there. You remember that, Nancy? But he brought a broad smile to my face, too. Brother Odell just reached his hand down, grabbed old John's hand, and picked him up. God healed him instantly. Yeah. Another man in that same church. His, his foot had been fused up and it. it was like this. Toes down here, his heel up here. And that's the only way he, he could walk with that. We had an evangelist, I don't remember his name, came in. This guy's name was Sonny. He's Fred Harris's uncle, matter of fact. And, uh, well, kind of, by marriage. But anyway, well, I don't remember his last name. Y'all, was you there that night too? Yeah. That guy, was you there that night, Nancy? Just a few of us from that back in that day. That guy, as, as that man prayed for him, that foot just went down like yeah. this. And then the leg, I guess the leg in the same time. Somewhere or another, he was totally and completely healed by the power of God. Yeah. That's something that'll make you pay attention. Yeah. That's something that'll build your faith. And this morning, just you hearing about it ought to be building your faith. Just you hearing the word of God yeah. ought to be building your faith. Paul was bold. Fred O'Dell was bold when he went back there and grabbed the hold of John Perry and jerked him up out of that seat. Paul was bold when he spoke the word and told the man to get up and walk. In closing, Amen. Romans 12 and 3 says this, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man. Everybody say every man. Every man. Everybody say, you're talking about me. You're talking about you. He's dealt to every man and woman the measure of faith. Right. 
Church, I want us to use it. Father God, we thank you right now, not only for our precious Jim and Jan, but many in this room right now that need a touch from you. God, some that are standing in faith for some miraculous thing in their finances. I thank you, God, you're that miracle worker. I thank you, God, that other areas, whether it might be some kind of uh, friction going on in the home, God, you're able to bring healing to that in the name of Jesus. Maybe children, Lord God, that have gone astray, you're able to bring those prodigals back that we heard about earlier this morning. You're, are, you're able, God, to bring them back in, in Jesus' name. You're able right now throughout this room, I just say to every one of you that are healing in Jesus' name, that the full manifestation hasn't come yet. I speak the word right now in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to be bold like Paul. If you've been standing in faith believing for any situation, physical, financial, mentally, anything. I say right now, if you've been standing in faith, I want you to stand your foot right, feet right now, both feet, right now, in Jesus' name. I'm not even looking around. I don't know who's doing it, but I want you to do that right now in the name of Jesus. Put your hands up in the air and start thanking Him for it in Jesus' name. That you stood up in faith by the power, and the power of God is taking charge now. Every situation, God, that is, oh my goodness, everyone is standing right now. I thank you, Father God, that you're bringing these things to pass in the name of the Lord. And we give you honor, glory, and praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you as you go this morning. After today, we'll be speaking Wednesday night at 7 o'clock back in the next building.